everyone, welcome back to my next video. I want to talk to you today about heat. And it's not going to be my normal uh, video about heat. Normally we just talk about propane heaters, don't we? And I know a lot of you cannot use propane heaters. There are a number of reasons that propane won't work for you. I know people who are actually allergic to it. Um, and other people who are simply afraid of it and they do not want it in their vehicle. So for you, you need an alternative to propane heat. I also know people who are in their cars or SUVs and you don't have the clearances. Clear, uh, propane heaters have to have a certain amount of space around them, uh, sides, front, and above. And in a car, you may just simply can't get enough clearance. And if you don't have enough clearance, you're at a severe risk of fire. Um, you can just give vent for carbon monoxide. That's not a problem. But fire risk from clearances is, is a severe problem. And uh, beyond, beyond that, it's the space they take up. So uh, the small space doesn't allow clearances. And you just don't have room in a car or SUV to carry around a, a propane tank or green bottles and, and, and the heater itself. There just isn't room. It's not, it's not a practical solution. And even in a larger vehicle, they're expensive. You know, even if you're in a van, you have the room uh, and the clearances. But another issue is their expense. They're expensive. You know, any the cheapest of any of the Mr. Little Buddy heaters are like 70 bucks. Uh, that's about the cheapest you can get one. And then you have to buy propane if you buy them in the green bottles. The green bottles is a minimum three, four dollars and up to eight, ten, ten dollars. You can pay for those things in certain places. So to buy it and then to run it and you're going to need a, really the only cheap way to do it is to buy a bulk bottle. And then you've got a bulk bottle you're buying. Um, and the smaller it is, the more expensive it is, bizarrely, 70, 80, 100 bucks for some of the small bottles. Um, the middle, the middle size, 20 pound bottles are usually going to be about $40, but even that's kind of expensive. It takes up a lot of space. It has a smell and odor. It's risky. And a lot of you, you just don't want propane. These are alternatives to propane. No propane heat to be discussed today. So uh, first, and, and I'm just going to do this as an overview today of what we're going to talk about in the series and because I can't talk about them all at once. First, we're going to talk about how to kind of create heat. You, um, you're in your car, I'll use a car as a specific example, uh, and you don't want to just keep dry, starting the engine and running the heater all the time. That gets expensive, it wears out your engine. So what do you do? Well, we're, first we'll look at ways to create heat in your car. And I have uh, uh, three ways here in front of me. This is a, this is a 110 volt um, uh, electric blanket. It's, we're gonna test to see how much solar it requires to see if you have enough solar and enough battery. And then the next one is, uh, this is a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter plug blanket. We're gonna compare three of these against each other. We're gonna see how much they draw, how much, uh, do they give out a practical amount of heat? Can you practically use one of these to stay warm? Uh, and so we'll test those and we'll, we'll see, all, we'll find out everything we can as best we can. And then finally, a third source of heat is candles. Uh, so I have three different types of candle here. This is an emergency candle. Um, this is a stand sport, and they they make uh, big ones, you know. I'm, and we have some big ones. Yeah, here, did I bring those out? I didn't bring those out, but I have some big ones. We're going to test. And we're going to see how cost effective are they. I mean, the candles are expensive. This one, this little candle was uh, ten dollars, and it runs up to eighteen hours. So that might be if we ran up four hours a day, and one of these was enough. Uh, four, four, sixteen. You would get about four days out of this $10, that's um, 250 a day. And is, is you gonna get any practical amount of heat out of this thing? I don't know, we're gonna find out. That's what we're gonna test. Another thing we're gonna test is a, uh, uh, Yuko is the brand name. They're pretty famous and well known. They make candle heaters, uh, specifically candle heaters. And so we're gonna test this candle heater. Um, you'll, and this one's actually the lantern, but the, it puts out the same amount of heat. Uh, and so. Uh, you've probably seen these or heard of these. It's a little candle lantern, and it comes with three different candles. And we're going to test this. And they make these that are designed to be heaters, that are designed uh, like with three different candles going at once. There are a lot of videos online about people who use these heaters, candle heaters. You can always do your, there's a do-it-yourself one where you do the uh, terracotta pots, and uh, you, you put a hole through the bottom, and you do bolts. And, and it, you know, they're pretty elaborate. Uh, 
and they might work and there there are videos online of people that say they do work and so to the best of my reasonable ability we're going to test them another for, source of heat these are for chafing dish these is this is made by gas one which um you know a lot of us are using gas one the little butane heaters so these are made by gas one uh, should be good quality they claim that each one of these will run for six hours and they cost a little over two dollars so if you ran one of these every night, that would cost you about $2 a day for heat uh, over, a, over a month. If you use it one a day every day for a month, that'd be about $60. So $60, $70, something like that. That's not cheap, but uh, it might make your life so much better than, the, uh, than being without it that it might be worth $70 to you. You're not paying $700 a month for rent. If you still have to spend $70 for heat, that's still not a bad deal. In fact, in your house, where you're paying $700, $1,000, $1,500 a month for your rent, uh, you're probably already paying hundreds of dollars in the winter for heat. A lot of you are. And so, you know, when you think about in that term, those terms, spending $70 to, to heat with a candle starts to seem more, more reasonable. If it works, and it may or may not work, uh, we'll find that out. So these are sources of, of things we're going to look at that create heat. And you're, you'll have more heat uh, at the end of the night than you would have had if you hadn't used these. Okay, now next we're going to talk about not, if you're not creating heat. Uh, how do you stay as warm as you possibly can inside your uh, car, your SUV, your van, even particularly a minivan or even a van? Uh, how do you stay warm in there if you're not creating heat in some method? Well, you have to keep it uh, close to you. Part of that will be... Um, I, if you can, you want to try and make a tent. And I'm hoping to do an experiment with creating a tent so that you can find the space. And then I think you might want to combine different methods. So we're going to look at different blankets because different blankets. Now, I'm assuming you all have your own blanket, uh, blankets, your own bedding. Uh, I would encourage all of you, when you leave your home to start uh, van dwelling, just take the blankets you have at home. They're fine. You don't need to go and buy anything else. But uh, chances are, they, you know, they're designed for a house that stays above 68, 70 degrees all the time. They're not really going to be warm enough. So you might think about getting better blankets. Now, I'm not talking about keeping warm at night. I'm assuming you're just going to pile on blankets or you're going to buy a quality sleeping bag. That's a topic for another, another video. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when the sun goes down in the winter, it's going to go down by 5. 5.30 at the latest, depending on, on the on your, if you're in daylight savings or not. 4.30 if you're on daylight savings and 5.30 when you're off. And so you got to go till 10.30. Most of us are going to stay up till 10.30. you got to be in your rig for about five or six hours every night uh, and, and stay warm in your rig. I don't want to just sit in there bundled up in my sleeping bag because that's the only way I can be warm. We're looking for a way to get away from that by creating heat, the ways we just talked about, and by bundling up in different blankets. So the first, uh, first blanket we'll look at is wool. Probably not many of you have a real wool blanket. This is a fairly, well, we're not gonna talk about them now, but this is a wool blanket. And wool keeps you warm when it's damp, and it uh, does a remarkably good job of that. It's really a good heat source. And so uh, when you're just, you're not adding heat, you're just keeping your own heat close. So we're going to actually test a wool blanket. Is it better? Not exactly sure how I can do that that's not subjective. I'll just tell you, when I grew up in Alaska, I lived all my life in Alaska. And uh, we moved there when I was six years old. And I slept in cold places. It was just routine. Um, and so we always had wool blankets. Uh, back then, it was, this was 1961. And I grew up until I lived at home, you know, until the 70s. And then uh, we always had a wool blanket on our beds, and they were heavy, and I really love the feeling of that heaviness. And they are warm. They're fantastically warm for the weight. And uh, so we're going to test what a blanket. This is a puffy blanket. I'm going to oh, do, we'll do a test on it. So this is a down, this is not down. It's a down alternative. But it also uh, has snaps, so it's a throw. It's really not a blanket as such. It's a, a blanket. You wrap it around you, and it has snaps, and you can wear it as a poncho. And that might work out really well in those dark, cold evenings at night while you're waiting to go to bed. So there are two types of blankets we're going to test. Um, but that's where this might go in conjunction with your candles. So the candles aren't going to keep your van at 70 degrees or even 68 degrees. You'd be lucky if on a cold night it kept it at 50, uh, 
anywhere in the 50s. So these two will be working together mostly, I believe. You're going to want to add some heat. But if not, uh, and then, of course, normally you're going to have to wear a hat. You're going to have to wear a hoodie. Um, and you're going to, uh, 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 we'll also talk about uh, down booties because you can't keep your feet warm. Um, and so down booties will keep your feet warm. We'll talk about that. Uh, and then one more thing I want to talk about that goes in conjunction with this, because this is only retaining your own body heat. I'm not counting a lot out of candles. We'll see. Something else you might think about, and we're going to test, are hot water bottles. And these are both the different kinds of hot water bottle. These are the cheap ones. This was 10 bucks. It comes, what you're seeing here is it comes with its own cover so that when you lay it on you or you're laying on it, um, it it's not that hot uh, fabric. Uh, usually these are kind of a plastic PVC type thing, and it's not right up against your skin. Uh, this is a much higher quality one. We're going to do an unboxing later, um, and uh, unbagging, and uh, it's actually rubber, but it still comes with its cover so that you're going to be much more comfortable. It's not going to be directly on you. So I think that might be something to do really well. So when you get your water hot and you put it in here, uh, then you're going to be adding some heat into your rig. So you're not going to run it for a long time because in a, in a car, particularly in a car and SUV, you don't want to run that for hours at a time to keep you warm, although it would definitely do it. But flame, open flame inside um, a rig is a really risky thing. You're just going to run it for a while. You're going to fill these full of water. You're going to put them on you, maybe one on your chest, one on your feet, and then you're going to cover up with these blankets. And so that might be a combination that will keep you pretty darn comfortable. A little bit of heat added by warming up the water, and then the, the this on you, and then I would, if it were me and I were going to use this, I would uh, dump that water out then. I wouldn't dump it outside. I'd put it in a container, warm up water in another container, and then you just keep reusing the water over and over again because we don't, that's a lot of water if you just throw it out every night. So that's kind of the idea we're looking at. We're, we're going to kind of scavenge together heat in different sources, maybe from a candle and a a hot water bottle and, and better blankets. Um, and we'll just see if all of them together can work and be a replacement for, uh, for that propane. Because a lot of you don't want propane, you can't have propane for whatever reason. So I, I hope this will work. I know it's important to a lot of you to figure this out. So um, I'm gonna make it as, as a scientific an experiment, eliminate as many variables as I can. And um, I, I've got a limited, amount of time and energy and resources and capabilities. So I'll just do my best uh, all along the way. So I hope you come back and you watch some of these videos and, and see how they work out. And um, these are all things for you to consider. And I'll do the testing first to hopefully find out the ones that I just think don't work at all. Or, hey, this worked surprisingly well. Or this seemed like a good idea. It was a terrible idea. So we'll just find out together. Okay. So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.